Greetings everyone, this is Energixer. I've created a system that allows the communication between the vanilla game and an external program, providing a way to make complex systems that would otherwise be difficult or even impossible to do a command box. Here are a few examples of what this can do. Most of the work required to run these contraptions is being done by another program, and then the instructions from Minecraft to run are added or injected into the world in the form of commands. To achieve this we need a few things. First we need something that allows the program to read input from the game. Simply put, this is the log file generated by the game. Each time a command executes or a chat message is sent, it is written to a latest.log file within the logs folder of the Minecraft directory. This is how Minecraft communicates with the injection program. That was simple, however, we still need something else. We need something in-game that can access information from outside game. Luckily enough, we have structure blocks. Structure blocks read MBT files inside the world structures folder. This is the main idea behind this concept. First, we have a redstone clock powering a structure block. This structure block is trying to load a file called VI0. However, this structure file does not exist in the world structures folder. So the structure block is essentially doing nothing at the moment. That is until the injection program decides that it wants to do something in-game. So the program creates a structure with a few command blocks inside and saves that structure under the name VI0. On the next cycle, now that there is a file called VI0, the structure block will realize that there is now a file to load. And so it will spawn the structure with all the commands in it. Since these command blocks are set to always active, they will trigger immediately running the commands inside. This works for the first cycle, but what happens if a program wants to do something in-game a second time? After all, whenever the game loads the structure, it will remember it until the world is reloaded, even if that file changes. So even if the program did generate the file again, the game would not see it as a new structure. The way around this is to generate structure files with different names every time. The original structure block has zero offset, meaning that it would replace itself after loading. Additionally, the generated structure also had a structure block at the origin. This means that when the structure VI0 is loaded, the structure block would be replaced with another one that's trying to load VI1 instead. The external program will remember the last number it generated and will continue generating structure files with the next name in the sequence. Of course, there's a lot more behind the scenes. The tool needs to remember the last number it generated when relaunched. The structure folder shouldn't have more than 20 injection structure files at any one time and it shouldn't generate structures if the game is paused or closed. All of these things have been considered to make the system as optimized as possible. I have left the Java code for the injection library in a GitHub repository linked to in the description, as well as the examples shown in this video for you to try out. That's it for now, thanks for watching.